Okay, so you're going to want to go right and then drop some stuff and then you're going to go back here and then you just want to, because you could keep doing this and, uh, you know what? Let's just start from the very beginning. How's that sound? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Law One Gaming. My name is Eric, and this is Kingdom. And we uh, today are going to go through and get the Safe in 25 achievement, and also just uh, kind of provide a guide for how to play this game since it does a very poor job of explaining itself. So I'm going to have tips at the bottom, and we're going to go through everything. Uh, first and foremost, you notice that my character was changing at the very start. Uh, you can select a different character or color scheme, basically. Uh, early on in the loading screen, if you just tap the down arrow while it's loading up and your character's there, so no, that's right there. Tip number one came by a while ago. Um, there's usually at least one camp straight to the east, and right there, right there, you see how I slowed it down? Uh, that's the edge of the map, so uh, going back to tip two, you want to explore the first day. Alright, great, we're all caught up. Perfect. So, uh, what is Kingdom? Kingdom is kind of an old retro ish styled game that goes left and right to do stuff. Um, ah, yes. And you can let your horse feed when it is hungry. Uh, so basically you take on the role of a king or queen, as it might be, and uh, try to take out the monsters and secure your kingdom. Uh, I've been playing it a bit over the uh, July 4th holiday, so... Uh, I figured I'd share some of my experiences with you guys and uh, just sh show you how I play and uh, if you get some uh, creative ways to go from there, awesome! Uh, but we do manage, I'm uh, not going to spoil it, we, we manage to do quite some stuff. Okay, so, obvious tip number four, stay inside at night. In this game, the monsters come out at night and they try to eat. So, you want to make sure they don't. And the first night, you don't really need walls, because it's just going to be one on each side. And having two archers can very easily just deal with that. So, I usually don't bother with walls. I'll uh, usually upgrade my camp to the first level on the uh, second day. And tip number five, don't build more than you need. I'm not building towers, I'm not building walls, I'm just recruiting people and making more archers because I don't need towers, I don't need walls. I do need to start clearing out some trees, but for the most part, as tip number six says, you want to rely almost exclusively on archers, especially for the very beginning, because they are just, like, the best. Uh, they will, they'll, or archers slash hunters, they'll collect money, they'll defend your borders, and uh, all sorts of other good stuff. Here comes tip number seven. The black horse is faster and has more stamina. I'm not sure if it has more stamina, actually. I, I haven't looked it up, but I know, I guess it either has more stamina or has better stamina recovery. Uh, because it will, uh... A lot, you'll, you'll sprint faster, and you can sprint more, it seems. And here comes tip number eight, deer herding. It's what I'm doing right here. Uh, you can kind of herd the deer towards your hunters if you go, like, kind of, like, you know, not too far behind them, not too close. As you see, one gets away right here, but my hunters pick up the rest, and there's some free money. Uh, it's nice to do at the start, and there you go. Free walls right there, tip number nine. Uh, when you get the second base upgrade, you'll have walls built for free. You don't have to spend the money. Goes back to uh, the other tip, don't build more than you need. Uh, so yeah, you can deer herd. It's useful for like the first five days if you just need a little bit bonus cash, but you almost never do it after that. Or if you do it, it's kind of just coincidental. Because eventually you're going to be going back and forth not even eventually. Like not, after not too long, you'll be going back and forth faster than uh, you can really care to herd the deer. Uh, but this goes into the next tip: when clearing trees, leave the last tree next to a camp. So I slow it down right there to show you how I had the uh, the last tree highlighted, but I did not clear it. That's because if you leave the last two trees up next to a camp, 
the camp will stay there and you can keep recruiting people from that side. Because what will happen, especially for a lot of newer players, is they'll clear everything, they'll build everything, because that's kind of how it... That, you know, that's usually a good idea in most of these games where you're building stuff up. Uh, in this game, you have to strategically not build things. And another example here is I'm not building the walls yet uh, because I want the grass to grow, tip number 11. I want the grass to grow out further. And this isn't just for aesthetic reasons or cosmetic reasons or however you want to think about it. This is because if you have land without grass on it, it doesn't do anything for your hunters. Uh, the rabbits won't appear, and it's just going to be vacant land. And unless you have a farm right there... Oh, this is... Okay, tip 12. Number... Really important. I'll get back to my farm thing. This one will let you build the stone structures, which you need later on. Uh, some of the earlier upgrades are kind of population-based or time-based. I'm not really sure. I never really cared to figure out exactly what it was, uh, especially because I just mass recruit people as much as possible. Uh, but the stone-based structures, you need to visit that masonry-looking shrine and do that first. Now you'll also notice that I have uh, a few scythes now from the merchant. The merchant, you give him four coins, he'll go to your base, and he'll drop off four tools of some sort. You don't get to decide which, it's not based on however close he is, it's completely random as far as I can figure out. So, I just gave him some money because I had the excess and I figured four tools of anything would be pretty good. So now I'm building the walls because the grass is brown. Uh, anyway, so yes, the grass needs to grow because they'll have the little bushes come up and that's where the rabbits come and that's where your hunter is going to get a lot of their money. Uh, they'll also get some from deer, but the deer need to be... They need to have more forest in order to, like, show up more frequently. Because you see the little grass bush there? Well, it went away, but the one right there, that's where rabbits come out of. So you want to have the grass around to keep the rabbits around, and your hunters will go back and forth and actually, you know, kill the rabbits and give you some coins, which is good. Now, you might notice on the right side, I'm not expanding too much. Uh, that's because there's no not any like wall spaces, and uh, here I was going to expand to the forest, but tip number thirteen: don't assign projects too late in the day. Uh, you'll if you do that, your builders will get caught outside the walls, and you'll just sacrifice a hammer and a coin for no real reason. So when it gets towards about midday, I tend to not assign projects unless. They're very close, or it's a quick thing, or uh, if I feel like it'll be a safe night, or I can essentially tank for my builders. What I mean by that is uh, you can stand kind of like with your builders and drop coins, and the little monsters will take the coins and run back to the portal rather than stick around and try to like attack your builder. Basically, they'll, they'll take the easier meal. So you just lay out nice little golden snacks for them, and they'll, they'll just snatch it right up. So, that's another tip, I guess. Uh, but, didn't have anything to do with the video right now, so... I didn't put in the caption title thing. Anyway, a lot of what you're going to be doing is recruiting people as... basically whenever you can. Um... You want tons and tons and tons of archers. Um, oh, getting back to the merchant, because we just well, rode by him uh, a little bit there. Uh, he's good and bad. He's good at the start, because he'll give you four things for real, real cheap. Basically, one gold per tool, but it's a random tool. So I'll use him maybe once or twice, up to like three or four times in any game, uh, especially closer to the start, because that's just free money in my pocket. Uh, let's see. All right, I break my own advice here, and I'm assigning projects late in the day, but that's because I believe last night was a red night. I don't recall. 
I don't recall exactly why I did this. Um, oh, I know why. It's because I also put down, I counted in my coins, and I also put down the wall uh, to the left, or the west side. Uh, and that's because I have enough archers here that we could secure the first red knight. And yeah, some of them fell down, but they picked their bows right back up. So it was NBD. That's why I broke my own rule right there. Um, that's kind of a from experience type thing. Uh, but it also had a negative effect because I built having the wall built there means uh, it's going to be harder to manage the grass growth underneath because uh, grass does not normally start in the forest. You'll just have a bunch of dirt land if you just have the forest stuff. So uh, it was a tactical decision, and I was fine with it because I wanted to get my builders out there. Tip number 14. It's better to have people than buildings. Um, having three archers is pretty much better than any upgrade, for the most part. Uh, you will, you know, it, 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 that that's a sliding scale kind of thing, because the waves at night get more intense as the game goes on, but especially towards the beginning, first five days, like, you could pretty much not do that. Like, nothing but archers. Speaking of which, tip 15. The Hunter Altar makes your arrows have more damage, and I think it also makes the arrows more accurate. Uh, I haven't really looked, like, I haven't looked up, like, anything for this game, and I haven't really parsed it out or anything, but that's how it feels to me. It feels like the arrows are more accurate, so... Uh, it's, it's a good upgrade to have if you're expecting combat. Uh, and tip number 16. Uh, the nights after the red moons are safer, so that's why I'm assigning projects at this at night right now because uh, I'm not really concerned about anything happening. And what even if something does happen, I got the I got plenty of hunters, I've got plenty of money, and uh, it's NBD for the most part, really. Uh, so now that I have the excess money and my borders are secure and safely expanded, I'm going to go ahead and actually start building farms so that these guys who are sitting around with their thumbs up their butt will have something to do. Hopefully. Uh, but, yeah. Did, a lot of the game is managing uh, what to build and what to not build at the right times. Like, you don't want to overextend. Well, it's, it's a lot of the same kind of building stuff up. You don't want to overextend. Uh, tip 17. The second level of the farm will keep workers there overnight. Tip 18. Farms build faster than any other building. So, um, that's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, or I guess tip 17 I'll explain. At night, if you don't have the second level farm, your farmers will go back to your main camp, or the nearest campfire, I think. Uh, I believe it's the nearest campfire. So if you have, like, a level 1 and then a level 2, then they'll go to the level 2 rather than the base if it's closer. Um, then, uh, tip 18, the farms build faster. Uh, that's just something to kind of keep in mind, I guess. Um, the walls will build pretty quickly. Or the walls build at a pretty slow rate. I, it, I don't know if they're about the same as the towers or not, but... The defensive structures are definitely a lot slower. The farms are about the quickest, and I think the portals are about medium. Um, but we'll get into building portals and stuff later on. Because right now, right now we're just focusing on uh, getting up some stone walls, keeping things going and all that stuff. And um, you saw I built a lot of ex excess stone towers and uh, arrow tower there. Uh, that's because when you go from wood to stone, it takes down the wall, and that lets the grass grow. So I was actually letting the grass grow on the west side uh, to get around my mistake from earlier. Uh, luckily, I managed to do that by assigning extra projects and having the extra money. Uh, but it was a it was a not guaranteed. Tip 19. The more you upgrade, the less you get in your chest in the morning. Uh, you need to upgrade overall. Um, just to win the game, obviously. But the more you do it, the less you get. Uh, it's not really 
a meaningful difference, if there even is a difference in the first few levels, uh, when you are like upgrading the wooden structure. Once you kind of get the stone walls though, uh, for your base, it you will notice that you're getting significantly fewer coins. And when you get the final upgrade, you're only going to get one coin per morning. So you want to keep that in mind, and like just like how you don't want to build too quickly, you don't want to upgrade too quickly. It basically, I would say for at least the first 10 to 15 days, you want to focus on clearing out, you want to focus on recruiting, recruiting archers specifically, or hunters, however you want to call, call them, and clearing out land and letting the grass kind of grow and expand, uh, and then securing your frontier as much as you can. Now I signed a project for the wall late at night or late in the day. Uh, I figured I had builders nearby, so I was not too concerned with uh, the wall not finishing. And I'm not bothering to upgrade these walls right now because I am planning to finish upgrading my base right there. When you go to stone walls, you get free top, you get a free second level tower on each side, and free first level stone walls. So the way the towers work are. There's level 1, which is just the platform on the rock. Level 2, which is a wooden tower. Level 3, the first stone tower with two spaces for archers. And the final level, level 4, is the second stone tower with three spaces. Uh, the, uh, upgrading the base of the stone walls will get you uh, the first... will give you the wooden tower and uh, the first level stone walls. And right here, tip 20. Waiting is sometimes the best move. Uh, I was planning to upgrade my base to the the final level, the stone keep and all that, uh, and I figured I'd just wait until morning so I could get the uh, few extra coins from the morning chest uh, before I just went ahead and did it. It was probably a net, like, three coin gain, uh, but you, you want to scrape together coins as much as you can, because you'll see I've never really had a point in the first few days where I had too many coins. And uh, now I am planning to attack, so tip 21. Use the Hunter Altar before attacking. Your archers are going to be escorted by a knight to the portal when you send out stuff to attack. Be a maximum of four archers per knight. Uh, the archers are going to be the ones doing the damage. The knight's going to be one that's just kind of keeping, like, the moving wall, so to speak, with fewer hit points on an actual wall. Uh, so... Since your archers are going to be doing the damage, you're going to want your archers to have uh, more more damage. Uh, tip 22, feed your knights extra coin. Uh, the knights' hit points are kind of based off of how many coins they have. Um, unlike everything else, when you kind of stop by them, the knights don't drop coins. They'll actually hold the coins, and they'll take priority in picking up coins when you drop them around them. Uh, this lets them stay alive longer. Basically, usually when something gets hit, they'll drop a coin first. If they have no coins, they'll drop their tool. Um, or if they have no extra coins, they'll drop their tool. If they have no tool, they'll drop the one coin that makes them not a beggar. Tip 23. The best time to attack is at night, but after they do. So I sent my knight to the east side now uh, to start clearing out the first portal because... Uh, well, I was gearing up to attack, and there I secure it for sure, with the uh, extra damage on the archers. Um, but you want to do it after they attack at night, because that gives your knights the greatest amount of time to get to the portal, and possibly get back uh, before there's another nightly raid. Um, sometimes you will at least get some archers who come back safely and sound, Usually, though, when you send out uh, anyone to attack the portal, just assume that they are going to be gone for good. Uh, that's just kind of how it is. Uh, tip 24. There is an audio cue when the portal is destroyed. So I'm upgrading more defenses now, uh, because basically I'm attacking right first, so I'm on my right side to uh, be more secure. There's also a visu visual cue for when your knights die in your base. The little uh, banner thing will be all shredded up when they die. Uh, tip 25. After a portal is destroyed, there is an attack. These attacks become increasingly difficult as more and more portals are destroyed. 
the first one, you don't need significant defenses really to withstand the attack. It's basically the basically the same as a like knight five or six attack on your walls, and uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna feel it for the most part as long as you've been recruiting a lot of hunters and all of that stuff. But um, level two and three, you're gonna want a lot of archers, and at least if you can get a tower on the front line, go for it. Uh, it's not overly important, but it is nice to have the extra. And you, like, see here, it's just... It's... Uh, you don't need the tower, but you definitely want to have the highest level wall for when you start taking on uh, the portals and attacking and all that. So, day 11, portal 1 is down. We are gearing up to take out portal number 2. We have plenty of archers. I haven't expanded to the east side at all. Uh, so all of my archers are kind of huddled together, uh, which means that when we go after the portal on the east side, it's like they're going to be safe. There's not going to be people who are getting caught out there or trying to run to a wall that doesn't exist because the wall doesn't exist. Uh, so the right side is going to be largely very secure. So now that the right side is secure. I just I'm keeping um I'm keeping at least four coins around or like four coins that I can somewhat have nearby for the next attack. Uh but otherwise I am building up the left side or the west side so that uh we can get ready for the final waves cuz uh the west side's going to be taking the larger hits later on or as the game goes on further. So I'm also going to give them a night and uh, we're kind of prepared to go. So as soon as this night is over, we're gonna go ahead and send our guys forward to take out the portal on the east side. So we have to withstand another night of not much happening, I suppose. But it is a red moon, so I guess a lot is gonna happen. So I'm just gonna stick around close because there's not much else to do. Generally, you guys don't make money during the night unless they happen to shoot a rabbit. And uh, tip number 26. I already said this before, but I'll say it again. When you send uh, your attack squad out, do not expect them to return. Expect them to pretty much all fall. Uh, and tip 27, kind of what I was getting at. You want to clear one side portal. The portal's on one side first. Uh, rather than kind of bouncing back and forth. That's because uh, taking out the third portal is kind of a heavy hit, and if you've been weathering a lot of attacks on both sides, then one side's probably not going to have the strength to withstand uh, the third portal being closed. Uh, and when you clear out both portals on one side, uh, that stops the nightly attacks from that side from happening. Uh, so basically, this will leave one side that's completely open and safe. You can build as you want, you can expand as you want, and you can really build up a solid economy on that side. Uh, meanwhile, you can and like use the money from that side to fortify your other side. Uh, I just happen to choose right for no particular reason. It's just kind of my play style. You could just as easily go left. I think the reason why I prefer securing right first is because there's that camp right next to the base on the uh, east side, and I I like to have that one kind of secure as soon as possible, um, because I just like having the save recruits. And in, in this seed, we happen to get two camps kind of really close on the east side, so uh, I felt like... Uh, Probably that was just the right call for this seed. Um, speaking of which, uh, the maps are somewhat procedurally generated. Kind of going back to tip number one, oh, tip 28 first. These floaty dudes are why towers are not especially useful. They'll pick up your guys and drag them away and they will target the towers first because, hey, they're further up and easier to pick up. However, tip number 29, these chubby dudes are why towers can be useful. So the floaty dudes will pick up your du your guys, and the chubby dudes will completely ignore towers. 
So you don't want to have everyone on the ground because the chubby dudes will just wreck them if the wall gets broken. But you don't want to have everyone in the tower because the floaty dudes will just pick them off and clear out your defenses. So you want to have a solid mixture. Basically, for the final waves especially, is you want to have a strong front with a lot of towers backing it up just to poke at the chubby dudes as they walk towards your main base. Because walls are going to fall, you basically have to expect that half or more of your kingdom is going to crumble in that final assault. Uh, but all you need to do to, with, to win at the end for the final assault is just kill the last thing and keep your crown on your head. After that, you're fine, because theoretically you have infinite money, infinite time, and infinite safety to do the rest and the game ends. Uh, but we're not considered with what happens after the game ends. We're considering with getting to the end right now. So, uh, that's just the tip I have right now for dealing with that situation is I don't like to build too many towers, at un least until the end, and even when I do want have towers, I want to make sure I have enough um, arrows at the front because the floaty guys will show up before the chubby guys, so I like to have the floaty guys being taken out. That way our towers are safe and the towers can take out the chubby guys when they kind of rush in with their other minions. Uh, speaking of the chubby guys too, they tend to, well they don't tend to, they spawn smaller guys. As you kind of saw last time around is they tend to barf guys out. And uh, it's a real pain in the butt. But it's okay, because we're prepared for that, I suppose. Uh, anyway, so east side is secure. As you can see, I'm kind of just clearing stuff out. I do decide to clear out this camp, because uh, there are four camps on the east side, and I decide I don't need four. I'm pretty much don't need more than the uh, the two that are close to me, but I do want to get my guys pushed up as far as possible, so I do build the far east wall. Uh, this will also send my hunters out across the entire east side uh, to hunt down deer and rabbits and all sorts of things, so the east side, the hunters, will now actually produce money, which is good. Yay, money. Now let's let the horse rest up here. So that's the plan for the east side, is we're developing the east side because the west side has been pretty much secure. It's got a, a solid economic base, um, and the east side does not. East side, kind of just where I'm drawing my people from. Uh, kind of like Russia, I guess. Or like, you know, Europa, Russia. Got a lot of manpower in the east, not a lot of development, but our west has a lot of development. Is kind of feeling, they're kind of feeling each other. So that's, I guess, how I think of it. So, since not much is happening, and I'm just kind of letting coins build up, I'm um, just kind of watching these guys clear out the trees. Tip 30. The portals can be used to make teleporters. Uh, now, the portal mechanic requires a bit of explanation to really get the full gist of it. Uh, so... Here's what, how you use it. You, play a, you pay a coin after it gets built, and then you put it down if you end your teleportation in a clear space. You can then build a second portal, and that'll kind of act like a, a back and forth kind of deal. Like, whichever one you step into, you'll step out of the other one. And it'll save you from having to, you know, basically... When you go into the teleporter for the first time, you, you see the black wavy screen, it gets... Like, you move faster than if you were just on your horse. Um, that screen is timed. You will eventually be kicked out of it if you don't teleport anywhere. So, building the back and forth will kind of set definite borders and make it easier. Uh, what I like to do is... I like to set the first portal right next to my main base, and the second portal to be immediately after that spot. That way... Um, I can kind of, like, I'll take, when I, when I go out to the east, I'll take the second portal to go all the way out and then run back, and then take the first portal to get back to my base. It'll save time, and if you manage it right, uh, it'll 
it will save time. It'll be easier. Uh, so you kind of want to have it planned out and have definite um, ideas of where your portals are and what you're doing with them. So as you can see now, the, the east side's making some money. Uh, the hunters are going around because they got lots of grass and lots of rabbits and all, all sorts of great stuff. Uh, and tip 32 came by a while ago, which is that on the final waves, there's going to be attacks on both sides, which I mentioned, I think. I know I've mentioned it earlier, at least. Um, so that's why I'm going to continue to fortify the east side a little bit as well. It's not my main priority, but it is something you want to do as well. And uh, this farm I built right there is a mistake. Um, basically, the grass had not finished growing, so I kind of got rid of its ability to grow any grass in this area, which is going to hurt my hunters and my hunter my my hunting income. Uh, and there's no real way to fix that because there's no grass anymore on this side. So if I cleared out everything, it'd just be a ton of dirt with some towers here and there and stuff. So. Uh, now I kind of really don't want to clear out the forest at all, because at least if I have the forest there, there will be deer, and that'll be good. Um, oh, what was I going to say? I completely lost my train of thought after that. Anyway, I'll think of it eventually. So, clearing out both sides, securing stuff, recruiting people, Yada 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 yada, and oh, the altars. So I talked about the the hunter altar for uh, earlier. There's two kinds of altars. There's the hunter altar and the builder altar. The hunter altar, which I just described earlier, is your arrows get better. Basically, your hunters get better, do more damage, and they're more accurate, as far as I can tell. The builder altar makes your walls have uh, extra hit points, so they'll be able to withstand more attacks. I don't know if they self-regenerate or anything, but they definitely have more hit points and can withstand a lot more. Uh, and then tip number 33, which you just saw. I had an excess of coins. If you have an excess of coins and a lot of guys around, one way you can kind of save those coins is to just drop them while you're sprinting by your guys. Um, if you are just picking up a ton of coins and not dropping them and like your purse is overflowing, what will happen is the coins will either automatically drop, or and when they autom or no, they, they will automatically drop. They could try to stack up, but uh, there's like coin physics at the top. So when they automatically drop, they can they can drop on the ground, uh, or they will drop into the water. And I think you saw a few of them do that a while back. Uh, so now we're taking out the third portal. Um, yeah, the west side, I'm pretty fine with. I am building it up more because I'm expecting it to take, uh, I guess, more of a thrashing coming up. And that actually ends up paying off because it does uh, with a third portal. And you'll see it in a little bit as to what exactly happens. Um, but I also, you know, it's it's a lot of going back and forth and managing both sides as much as you can. Uh, you want to... Yeah, I really hate this. <laughs> and I think I ended up do clearing out the forest like an idiot. But yeah, you want, I'm, I constantly want to keep building up this side because there's not many places that I have on the east side to build the walls. Uh, which is why I'm kind of... I guess that's why I'm clearing out more of the forest uh, at this point, because I, I, I just... I don't have enough wall spaces free on the east side. And that's kind of unfortunate. Um, I sh probably should be building more towers at this point, but I'm kind of putting... I, so what I'm doing is a risky... A risky, riskier move is I'm putting all my eggs in one basket with defending the wall. Um, basic, my idea is have all the archers out front, and the wall never falls. If the wall never falls, great. If the wall does fall, well, then that's kind of bad. And as you can see over here, one of the walls fell. <laughs> so that kind of gives me uh, an idea of what's to come. 
Uh, but now that we have this portal cleared out, I am going to go ahead and clear out more stuff and advance further. And hey, there's a second chest. So, uh, that reminds me, uh, as far as the procedurally generated stuff goes, there will be two bonus chests just lying around somewhere. I think there's at least one on the west side, but I'm not sure. I, don't, I can't recall playing any games where I had two on the east side. So maybe that's just how my luck turned out, uh, but that's, you know, anecdotal experience at least. And um, two portals on each side, at least one hunter altar, well, only one hunter altar, one builder altar, and the uh, mason altar. There's also the horse thing to switch from uh, the brown horse to the black horse. And we've already talked about the black horse. Um... Now you might notice these uh, arrow things. What will happen with them is you'll have two builders come over and they'll build a catapult. Now I'm only building a catapult now because, and it's only for the east side, because if you build a catapult and it defends, it will like it'll toss rocks off over the wall. Now there's two bad things about that. The first bad thing is when the chubby guys come. Uh, they'll pick up the rocks and they'll just hurl them across the wall. And it'll deal damage to the wall and it'll take out people on the other side of the wall. So basically, you make chubby archers if you do that. The other problem is, um, if you have the wall at the maximum level and a lot of archers up there, sometimes the catapults will just kind of miss and they'll fall back and they'll crunch a bunch of your archers. Now, it'll be okay because the archers won't immediately come beggars, and some of them will pick their bows back up. But I've had other games where it's like, that happens, and then suddenly I have, like, six to ten archers just walking back to the base without a bow, and then I gotta deal with them and give them bows and all that stuff, and it's just... It's not worth doing. Um, it's sort of worthwhile for the final wave, because uh, the good thing about catapults is they do a lot of damage. I think... Uh, the floaty guys, if they get hit by the, the boulder or the projectile, they'll just go down immediately. And uh, what'll happen is, it's a very satisfying sound too, is uh, when the catapult launches at the, the little guys, it'll take out all of them that get hit by the projectile. So it'll go over and it'll kind of bounce and roll a bit and all of those guys get taken out. It's kind of like if you've played Napoleon or Empire Total War and you have um, just a regular shot cannon, and it just goes through cavalry, and it just takes out a whole bunch. It's it's a lot like that. So, that is the benefit of the catapults, is they'll keep the walls a little bit extra secure if you manage them properly. So I tend to avoid them at least until the late game. Because it also ties up builders. But it also... It keeps builders at the front. So the wall... Like, They'll prioritize, they won't just sit on the catapult, they'll also do stuff around the catapult during the day. It'll prioritize repairing that wall, it'll uh, prioritize building any towers that are nearby or any other projects that are nearby, um, and they'll prioritize if there's like more to expand in that direction. Like let's say I built a wall here, and then there was the other wall at the far east to still build. It would prioritize moving up and building that wall. So to like, like, it'll help expand. Help secure, help expand. So, uh, that's pretty much the benefit of the catapults. Um, again, use it at your own risk. So, we are getting ready for the final push at this point. So I am upgrading my tower to the max level. Uh, what I really should be doing at this point is building a lot more of the archery towers. Um, because that's going to... That would probably have saved a lot of trouble that I'm going to have on the east side <laughs> coming up. Um, because it's... They deal with the chubby guys way better. And uh, if your wall fall, like If you go with the heavy wall strategy like I have already, uh, the floaty guys aren't going to be much of an issue anyway. Um, it's gonna be the chubby guys and all their minions. So, you wanna kinda snipe them with the towers as they walk by. 
But I was in a rush and uh, could have done this. Like I could have secured more because I have the coins for it. I could have at least made level like the level one stone towers on each side at all the uh, rock points. Uh, but I didn't, and uh, it'll show. But it's not a huge deal. Uh, I would recommend, especially for your, your first go-around for trying to win, that you definitely have uh, as many towers upgraded as possible. Because uh, tip 34, you need high defenses for the final wave. Like I said, they're going to come from both sides, and they're going to be friggin' massive. And uh, the only reason why I did it now, like, I for the done in 24, 25 achievement, I want to have, like, two extra days. Like, you don't need to do it as soon as I do it. You do need to do it before day 25, because it's not just that you kill the final portal, is you have to kill the last minion that spawns from that portal in the final attack. So you're going to want to do it by day 23 at the very latest. So, I'm figuring at this point my defenses are good enough. Um, I'm thinking the east side's going to hold really easily because everyone's up front. We're got, we got all of our guys there. Um, but it actually ends up not working out that way. What ends up happening is the east falls. And I think the reason it fell uh, is probably because the hunters were all spread out. And, uh, like, because you, you got guys back here and stuff. And so it's kind of just a running sort of attrition. Oh, lost my crown. That's okay. We got it back. <laughs> so, yes, if you take a hit when... Uh, you don't have any coins in your purse, your crown falls off. And if one of the little guys picks up your crown, it's just game over. And you get to watch for about 10 seconds as the game ends. And you get told, no crown, no king, or queen, depending on uh, however you're doing it. And so I was checking out the main base right there, and saw that the west side actually held up. So even though we're at the gates, so to speak, uh, there's a lot of guys trying to get in. Not many archers on the east side. I'm feeling pretty confident at this point because the west side is completely held, and I know it's got defenses. And uh, if if there were more floaty guys, we'd be seeing them already. So daylight comes, a lot of them go. Some of them do come back because the spawned ones of the chubby guys will come back. Chubby guys never retreat. So it looks like there's three or four chubby guys in there. But we got the towers, and we got the extra walls to deal with it, so I'm not going to say... Oh, yeah, if the little guys pick up stuff, they will just run back to whatever portal is closest. So, uh, if they're west of your main campfire, they'll just run all the way west. That's the closest one. So, the last chubby guy goes down, and then we get the uh, achievement, because the last little guy went down, too. 22 days. The crown is safe. Uh, so, that was my playthrough and my kind of uh, experience with playing this game. Uh, if you got any questions or anything else, feel free to message me on Steam or down in the comments. I'll happily answer any questions. Otherwise, um, I think it's kind of all up there. And I wish you all the best of luck if you choose to uh, go for the done in 25 achievement and otherwise you know i hope you enjoyed watching hope you enjoy playing and i uh, hope you learned something and i hope we all learned something today that we're not so different you and i anyway i'll see you next time thanks for watching